I see a lot of questions on Facebook in particular about people who are new to motorhomes who are a bit confused about how the electricity in a motorhome works and it can be a bit confusing. So I thought I'd take the opportunity to show you around the electrics in this our motorhome. It's a Swift Contiki Sport 574. It's two years old and it's fairly standard as far as electrics go. So I think I'll show you around. So there's two types of electricity as far as motorhomes are concerned and that is first of all the mains electricity that's 230 volts alternating current and that can be quite dangerous if you're messing about with 230 volt electricity so please be careful wherever you see that sign. The other type of electricity is 12 volt electricity and that's DC direct current it comes from your engine uh, via the alternator so your engine generates uh, 12 volt electricity and that charges the vehicle battery. Now you've also got a leisure battery with the vehicle which is a slightly separate system and that can be charged by the mains. So let's start showing you around before, I get, before it gets too confusing. Right, the mains electricity comes in and is routed to this board here which is in my van is underneath the sofa and there's two areas uh, that we're concerned with. We'll start with this one because this is where the mains circuits come in and what you've got are miniature circuit breakers uh, here and they operate different parts of the electric system on your motor. You may find that you've got a little label like this and that tells you what they do. So MCB1 are the sockets. So that one is the sockets. MCB2 is the heating system and MCB3 is the fridge. So that gives you an idea of what the mains does in this van. It drives the sockets, it operates the heating system and it operates the fridge. So that operates the charger. Now let's explain that. This button here, oh sorry, this light here and this button, that charger charges the 12 volt batteries. So if I switch that off, you can see that goes off. So that mains is charging the battery charger. Let me show you where that is. It's going to be actually quite difficult for me to show you where the mains charger is because it's hidden under this box. But if you look under there, you might just see there's a, a light under there. Now there's a unit under there and that is the charger. And what that does is that converts the 230 volt AC electricity and it uses it to charge the batteries. I'll show you where the batteries are. So once I've moved everything out of the way, you can see where my leisure battery is. And this is under the other sofa and I've got a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. That means it can do 100 amps for one hour or 10 amps for 10 hours or combinations thereof. But theoretically, that is, um, in reality, once it's got down to 50% of its charge, that battery is as good as flat. So it really is a 50 amp hour battery. Uh, so don't rely on it to provide 100 amps for one hour or any combination of that. These, these standard batteries have a limited life cycle. But that battery supplies 12 volts to this socket here. So that's a 12 volt socket. 12 volts lights here and here and up there and up here. So all these lights that you see in the motorhome, they're all 12 volts. It's also worth noting that when the engine is running, none of these lights are going to work. And that's the lights in the habitation area. So none of them are going to work. The only lights that will work are the ones in the cab area. 
So why is that? Well, according to the handbook, the power control system is designed to shut down parts of the system while the engine is running. And this is to meet electromagnetic compatibility regulations and to, to ensure the safe operation of the motorhome. With the engine running, the screen will show a warning of engine running. And uh, when fitted designated 12 volt sockets en route reading lights and en route heating will remain operational while the engine's running. So like I say, the lights in the cab will work, the en route heating will work, uh, but the sockets, the 12 volt sockets and obviously the 240 volt sockets won't be working, or, nor will the lights in this habitation area. So do bear that in mind, it often catches people out. Right, the vehicle battery is actually under this panel. Just in front of the passenger seat on the Fiat Ducato. And it's got all the terminals on it here and some fuses and some electronics. So the other side of this panel here these are your 12 volt fuses. And if you look over there, you'll see there's a list of all the fuses. The first one is a battery charger, fridge, alarm and outer heating, 12 volt sockets, TV amp, extractor fans, appliances, hob ignition, toilet, water pumps, motorhome tank heaters, lighting, auxiliary, motorhome fridge, motorhome towing, motorhome fridge again. So you can see a lot of the electrics in the motorhome are 12 volt. So this is the fridge controls and it's got an auto setting, a gas setting, which you can use when you're not connected to mains electricity and a 12 volt setting and that only works when you're driving or the engine is running and a 230 volt AC for the fridge. And you can see that on the control panel here. Alarm, that vehicle battery, gas, mains electricity or automatically it will switch between whichever one of those it needs. Most times we leave the fridge on automatic. You just heard it click and it, because we're connected to mains electricity it will use mains electricity. If I was to switch it to gas it will switch to gas. And it's important to realize that if you switch it on to gas it will actually stay on gas unless you tell it otherwise. So you really need to leave it on auto and let it switch over as it needs to. You don't want it running on gas when you go into a petrol station. So for that reason, the fridge is best left on auto. Now obviously on other motorhomes, there will be a manual uh, switch over that will determine which uh, which supply you're using for your fridge. And in case you're wondering what happens when you've got it on auto and the engine's running, like I say, it switches over to battery, but if we were to stop the engine, what we'll then find is it will not automatically switch over to gas until about 15 minutes have gone by and the reason for that is you you may have pulled into a petrol station and you don't want it ignited on gas so there's a 15 minute safety delay before it switches on to gas uh, this sometimes catches people out when they arrive at campsites wondering why the fridge has not switched over to gas before they've plugged in or if they're wild camping they wonder why their fridge is not on gas and 15 minutes later the gas will actually come on so presumably you've got 15 minutes of grace before you have to leave the petrol station. So mains sockets, mains for the fridge,
Now I've disconnected the mains electricity, but obviously all the lights are still working. One notable omission you'll see is that the microwave's not working anymore. And those sockets won't work anymore. The fridge will still work on gas. But if I try and put it on... Ooh, it won't work on mains electricity. And it complains bitterly about that. If I put it on auto, it will switch to using gas. So you can't run the fridge on 230 volts when you've got no mains at 230 volts. Which I guess seems fairly obvious really, doesn't it? You can't use your microwave. And we certainly won't be able to make ourselves a cup of coffee using the Tassimo. But we can still operate our TV with no mains in there because, like I say, that's the 12 volt socket that TV can use. So none of the mains sockets on this extension lead will work and I can't charge my router. And those won't work either because they're powered via mains as well. So I'm not going to be able to dry my hair, make a cup of coffee or use the microwave. What am I going to do? I could invest in one of these and what this does it has a built-in battery which you charge up and it can provide AC power so I can now dry my hair And this is a power oak unit. I've done a video on three of these now, uh, these power units, and they are very useful. If you need access to mains electricity when you're not on campsite on hookup and you're out and about and you need to charge something or run something that only works on AC. So you might want to think about one of these. Or you could invest in an inverter. And what an inverter does is it takes the 12 volts that you've got in your motorhome from the battery and it can convert it into 230 volts electricity and that's effectively what this unit is doing it's provide it's taking uh, battery power and it's turning it into ac power it also provides dc power out as well up here and here as well so if you haven't already, please check out the video on the power units and I'll put a, a link. Oop, I'll put a link up there. Or is it up there? And another unit I've got fitted to the van is a solar panel. And that solar panel takes sunlight, which we've got some of today. It sends it down the wire to this unit in here. So I thought I'd better explain what this solar panel regulator does. It takes the voltage from your solar panels, which can vary depending on how much sunlight you've got, and it converts it into something that can charge your motorhome leisure batteries and indeed your vehicle batteries, somewhere between 13 volts and 14.4 volts, depending on how much charge they need. And on a nice sunny day we will be getting some electricity in from the solar panel and that is actually charging the vehicle battery at the moment that little sun symbol tells me the vehicle battery has been charged by the sun so if you've got a solar panel that will help charge your leisure batteries important to realize that solar power doesn't provide mains electricity a few people get that confused as well all that solar power power does is it charges your batteries. When you're off hookup, your Tassimo won't work, your microwave won't work, and your fridge won't work on 230 volts. But fortunately, just about everything else does. So motorhome is a very versatile vehicle as far as electricity goes. 
and you'll find that without mains hookup you can do most of the things that you need to do as long as you don't need these things. Let's just talk about how the power is distributed. I'm going to plug the mains back in now so you'll see the difference. It's worth mentioning that this vehicle contains a smart charge feature and what that does is it directs the charger to charge whichever battery needs the charge. So at the moment uh, we're charging the leisure battery and the vehicle battery has been charged on solar and if the vehicle battery was to need charge the smart charge feature will automatically switch over to charging the vehicle with the mains charger if there's no solar obviously. And this button here determines which battery normally receives the charge via the mains charger. So if I press that it switches over to the vehicle receiving the charge from the mains charger and the leisure is receiving the charge from the solar. Normally you'd leave it on on leisure and let the smart charger sort it out. Let's just talk about something we're very familiar with these days, USB sockets. If we go into this slightly untidy bedroom, you'll see this panel, I've got some USB sockets. Now they work off the 12 volt leisure battery. I've got some lights that have USB sockets on them as well. Not particularly easy to see, but there is a USB socket there and there's another one on the other side. They're quite useful for charging your phone, which you can just leave there. Another one on the other side, no USB sockets there. So I've only got a couple of USB sockets in the motorhome, but if I'm on mains hookup, these sockets now work. So they, they're powered from the mains cable, so I can use that. If you've got one of these, you can also switch the DC supply on and you've got some USB sockets there as well, so you can charge your phone using those. There is a further USB socket, at least one socket, in the cab, and that is under here. But on this motorhome, that only works when you're driving. Some other vehicles, notably the Transit, the USB socket is on all the time, which could actually drain your battery. Now if I look in my Swift Owners Group handbook, there is a section in here and it gives you some consumption figures for 230 volts, 12 volts and for gas incidentally. So let's have a look at some of that. So 230 volts first of all, it says a Dometic refrigerator on 230 volts takes 0.8 amps and uses 190 watts. It says uh, we've got Audi heating system and that has different settings uh, for different power levels up to three kilowatts and at three kilowatts it would use 13.7 amps. The microwave, if you're running the microwave, takes 5.5 amps and if you've got the electric hot plate on that takes up to 3.7 amps. The battery charger takes three amps now bear in mind that most campsite hookups are 16 amps and you can see that you could quickly run away with using uh, too much electricity and you would trip the little miniature circuit breakers in the vehicle because you've exceeded the 16 amps. So you do have to be careful how much electricity you use on 230 volts. I tend to leave the heating on the middle setting which uh, uses 9.1 amps. Now there's an additional setting here for power. If I go there and this tells you how much power you're currently using. You can set a limit for how much you want the system to use. Now, if it goes above that limit, it will switch the heating off. So let's have a look. If I switch the heating on, there's the heating, and I'll put it on maximum, and we'll turn it up. It's only nine degrees in here. I'm actually shivering a bit. And we'll go to the power setting. And we'll go to there, see almost immediately that's gone up to, well, 10 amps, 10.6, 15 amps. That's quite amazing, isn't it? If I was to put that down a bit, 
that will switch the heating off. So that's what this limiter does. It limits the amount of current that you can use. So if you don't want to trip your, the campsite's bollards, leave that on the limit there. I'm going to switch, I'm going to switch the electric hot plate on. We're using 13.914 amps now. The heating settled down a bit, but we're still running close to the maximum that we can use. So it's probably sensible just to step the electric down to the second setting. And if we look at the power now, still using 13 amps, but at least, at least we're not going to trip the supply. So what about the 12 volt side of things? Again, it's talking about watts and amps. So it says the Dometic refrigerator is only working when you're driving. The Audi heating on 12 volts can use one amp. Microwave obviously not, don't use that. The hob burners don't use that. And electric hot plate, you don't use that. The grill has a cooling fan that uses up to 1.2 amps. The oven uses up to 1.2 amps. The vent, the fan above the kitchen, up to 7.2 amps. The powered skylight, I haven't got a powered skylight. 12 volt lights each, depending on the size of the lights, half an amp each. So there's four of them in here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve of those, another six amps maybe. We've got a tank heater as well, and that can use two and a half amps. So you can see that can quickly add up as well. Do you remember I said that the battery was a 100 amp hour battery? So which means it can provide half of that for an hour, realistically. 50 amps for one hour, or 25 amps for two hours, or uh, 12 and a half amps for for four hours so you could run down your battery and that's where the solar panel comes in is if you've got a lot of lights on and uh, you've got the other things going is that you probably need the solar panel to top up the battery if you're not on mains if you are on mains the mains will be charging your battery and trying to replace the amount that you've taken out of the battery for running the lights etc yeah, so if you're planning to spend some time without mains hookup, then you may need to think about upgrading your battery. I mean, different types of batteries available. There are lithium batteries, which I'm not going to go into here, but they do last longer. Uh, they are considerably more expensive, of course. Uh, you can think about inverters and all that sort of thing. Obviously, like I say, most of this motorhome is standard, and I just use the power bank uh, for additional battery charging and occasionally running hair dryers when we're when we're not on hookup so i hope you found that useful um, if you did give us a thumbs up if you haven't already remember to subscribe because that really helps uh, subscribing and if you leave a comment uh, let us know what your arrangements are for your motor if you've uh, added any extras to it uh, if you've upgraded for off-gridding or anything else you want to add to the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye then.